Come on, everybody, and learn not to burn. Just stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop. Safety is becoming an increasingly important activity in the chemical industry. This is due to several recent significant chemical accidents, increasing public awareness, and skyrocketing liability and accident costs. The immediate impacts of a single accident can lead to loss of lives, damaged property, and businesses, or even severe environmental impact. These accidents can be in form of fire, explosion, and toxic release. Therefore, safety is becoming an important culture in most companies. In the past, chemical companies have addressed chemical hazards in different ways, but now most chemical companies have found it more cost-effective and safer to eliminate or minimize the hazards rather than control the hazards. Now let's look at the production of ethylene diamine. Suppose a company produces ethylene diamine using a specific process, which involves reacting ethylene dichloride and ammonia. Some of ethylene dichloride's hazards are, it is highly flammable, can produce toxic and irritating gas, contact with eyes causes corneal injury, and inhalation causes nausea, drunkenness, and depression. The reaction of ethylene dichloride and ammonia produces ethylene amines and hydrogen chloride. There are many hazards associated with hydrogen chloride, the main ones being it is corrosive to the skin and mucous membranes and can cause serious burns. So to neutralize the product, hydrogen chloride, sodium hydroxide is introduced to the process, producing sodium chloride and water. The company did not perform a thorough hazard analysis to determine the compatibility of sodium hydroxide with EDC, so they stored both chemicals in the same storage space. What they didn't know is that these two reactants were very incompatible. And guess what? During the chemical process, some of the EDC came in contact with sodium hydroxide. This led to an intense explosive reaction that destroyed property and produced acid fumes, base fumes, and vinyl chloride, killing 15 employees and 35 nearby residents. Some of the associated problems were that the employees were not trained properly for the, this likely event and there is no documented emergency response program. The question is, was this an inherently safe plant? No, because the reaction chemistry made it likely for certain hazards to happen. After this accident, the company decided to invest money to improve its process safety management and risk management program. To improve their PSM and RPM, they hired an expert to do a thorough hazard analysis to make sure the employees understood the hazards involved with the chemicals they handle and the compatibility of those chemicals. After the analysis, the company decided to switch the primary reactant from EDC to monoethanolamine, MEA. The hazards associated with MEA are that it is a gas which can irritate the eyes and nose. However, MEA is not flammable and does not produce hydrogen chloride when reacted with ammonia, so hydrogen chloride doesn't have to be neutralized later, which reduces the overall reaction process. So the new, less hazardous process reacts MEA and ammonia, producing ethylamines and water, which are not as hazardous as the other products. So is this process 
inherently safe. Not necessarily, but it is inherently safer. The main hazards involved with this process are corrosivity and the generation of gas. How does changing the reactants make this process safer? Now, there is little or no risk of explosion. This process is safer because it relies on chemistry and physics of the process to make it safer. An inherently safe design, or ISD, uses four strategies. One, minimize the use of hazardous chemicals. Two, substitute a hazardous chemical for a less hazardous one. Three, moderate the strength of an effect. And four, simplify the process by eliminating problems in the design process rather than having additional features to deal with them. An inherently safe design is integral to the product, process, or design, and it cannot be changed without fundamentally altering the process or the plant. However, it is never too late to incorporate inherently safe design. They utilize inherently safe design to make its process safer so their employees can work and return home to their families safely. With process safety management and a risk management plan, they implemented the four strategies of inherently safe design and restructured their company's safety culture. An effective training program was implemented and made mandatory so all its employees can understand the hazards associated with the process and know how to respond to the release of a hazardous chemical. An emergency response program has also been prepared in the case of an explosion or release of a toxic substance. With this new process, there is a lower chance of that happening. However, being prepared is a part of process safety management. Today, the company has been running for approximately 20 years without any major accidents. Everyone is happier and safer with inherently safe design, PSM, and RPM implementation. Thank you.